Hey guys, Spartan Jess here, and today I wanted to hold off on the Halo Outpost Discovery video, like it isn't late already, and as a 1,000 subscriber special, thank you guys so much for that, I decided to teach all of you how to make your very own Airsoft Compact Plasma Rifle. The two main pieces to this conversion will be the Disguised Plasma Rifle prop that costs $15, and the BOA Airsoft Pistol. Now the BOA Airsoft Pistol isn't the best Airsoft Pistol in the world, but the gun works perfectly for this conversion. If you guys want to use a different pistol, then that's entirely up to you. You can use a fully automatic pistol or even a blowback pistol if you want. Also, the tools and materials needed for this conversion will be listed in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's head straight into the video. So I went ahead and already took apart one of the BOA Airsoft CO2 pistols, and this is the interior of the gun. I mainly wanted to see if there was any open space near where the rail of the pistol was. So I already went ahead and I marked the bottom of it to show where the open spots are so I could put screws through the plasma rifle prop and put it through this part of the pistol. And I also went ahead and marked this part of the trigger guard as well. The reason why I'm cutting off the trigger guard is I want the gun to look a lot like the plasma rifle and the plasma rifle doesn't have a trigger guard on it. So you could cut this off if you want, it's up to you, but for safety reasons you may not want to cut it off, but I'm going to cut it off anyways. So just as a warning, cut the trigger guard off at your own risk. So after checking for empty spots in the other BOA Airsoft pistol, in the rail area, and the CO2 casing at the bottom, our next step is to cut off the grip of the plasma rifle. So I'm just going to cut to the middle and have an easy, easy way to just snap it off. Just like that. So if you guys are looking for a specific area to dremel or cut the plastic bottom piece, just go right where this edge is. I had to end up uh, cutting a little further back all the way to this fin piece of the top piece of the plasma rifle, just so I could try to get the pistol inside right here. And I also had to cut that little tip of the leftover trigger guard of the pistol and I'm going to also have to cut off this piece of the plasma rifle so the trigger can go push up and eventually I can put the screws through the plasma rifle to hit the rail of the BOA airsoft pistol. Cutting off this piece, let's go ahead and test it. Trigger is easily accessible because of the free space up here. It's easy to hold on to. So now moving on to the bottom piece of the plasma rifle, we're going to attempt to cut this area right here and cutting off the rest of this grip. So we could try to attach our pistol around this area. Looks like I'm also going to have to cut off this big squarish area in the back. After taking the squarish piece off of the bottom piece of the plasma rifle, now we have an idea of where we want to attach the grip onto the bottom piece. So what we're going to have to do is make an opening at the bottom here. So if you guys want to like reload your magazine for the pistol and whatnot, it'll be like a flap right here that you can just open. Whenever you pull this piece back, 
and the same hole will move back with the bottom piece to access the CO2 area for the gun. To figure out where to put the hole at the bottom of the plasma rifle, I want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned with the front of the plasma rifle here, where these two teeth are. And I also made sure to count up these hexagons right here, up to five of them for a perfect measurement. And then moving to the side two, moving to this side two, and then going down. If you guys want to make this a little bigger for reloading and accessing the CO2, you're welcome to do so. So that's what the bottom hole should look like for the plasma rifle. If you guys want, you can hold on to this piece and somehow make a little flap. So if you guys don't want the hole showing the whole time, you're welcome to do so. I'm probably not gonna do that for mine. So, and uh, I also dremeled a little bit at these corners over here because I realized the magwell for the pistol needed a bigger entrance for the mags to go in. So once this goes in the bottom, that's where it'll go. So our next step for the project is getting a piece of wood that's three by one. Actually, it's not gonna be a three by one. We're gonna to have to cut it because this is where the, the magwell for the pistol is gonna be able to reload. So we're gonna cut this off and now it's gonna be a two by one. And notice how it's a little beveled because the interior of this piece is also beveled that way as well. So what I did is I took the Dremel and I sanded it down a little bit so it has a little curve at the end. So it's easier to stick the piece of wood inside of here. What we're basically doing with this piece of wood is basically taking off the CO2 cap right here, putting a couple screws at the bottom right here. And those screws are going to attach to this piece of wood. So this is what's going to hold the bottom piece with the pistol grip. I managed to screw in some two screws at the back at these two little squares because again, this piece of wood is two inches, so it goes all the way to just about this third block here of this plasma rifle design. And just make sure to be careful whenever you're screwing this piece of wood in or whatever you plan on using to stabilize the pistol grip onto the bottom piece here. Because if you screw right here, your wood piece will start to curve upward. So make sure whenever you put the second screw onto the piece of wood, make sure to push down on this piece of wood and then screw this in. If you do that, the piece of wood will level itself out and it'll make the bottom piece straight and not curved upward or downward. So our next step is to try to put a couple of screws through this grip piece into this wood. So I've already uh, pre-drilled a little, uh, two tiny holes at the bottom of this. I pre-drilled it with a one by 16th bit. So it's small enough to help these size screws to go through but still get some grip in them. I recommend to use some of these uh, flatter head screws besides these kind of screws. So once you put these screws inside of the grip, it won't mess with this part. So you won't have anything in the way of trying to unscrew the CO2 whenever you're trying to restock it and refill it and whatnot. So while doing this process, the wood block, if you don't cut it at a curve at this side of the wood block, the magazine will have trouble trying to go in I've learned this the hard way, so I've cut it at a slant, so my magazine is able to go in easily and drop out easily. I learned that it's probably a really good idea to pre-drill these two bottom holes for these two screws in here. So it's a lot easier for you to screw these two screws into the wood and the grip piece. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my, uh, my screw gun to fit all the way through there, so I had to hand screw these two screws. So let's test it out. Ta-da, not shaking, stabilized just by that one piece of wood. The other BOA airsoft pistol that I took apart and examined, I already took the initiative to pre-drill these screws right here and I pre-drilled just a little bit into the gun, not too far. And I've managed to put these tiny little screws into those little pre-drill holes, but our problem right now is trying to figure out how to access the safety. So what I'm doing with the leftover BOA shell of the pistol that I took apart, I'm trying to put it just about right here, exactly where the other pistol is, 
and I'm going to mark where the safety is so I can make a hole right here somewhere so people can activate the safety if they you know, need to put it on safety or ready to fire. Successfully cut out an area for the safety of the gun. Now it's easily accessible to put it on safe and fire mode. One of the big problems with doing this conversion is the fact that this top piece likes to wobble around a little bit. So what I did is I cut a little bit of EVA foam. It's not the best cuts in the world, but it's going to get the job done. And what I plan to do is taking this piece of EVA foam and gluing it into here. This is going to fix our wobbling problem at the top of the plasma rifle prop. So I was able to glue the EVA foam into the top piece of the plasma rifle. And now let's test it. Look at that. Top piece is no longer shaky and it's very stable just by that one piece of EVA foam inside. All right, so our next step is gonna be kind of odd, but whatever works. So I've put in some new CO2 into the gun. I'm gonna load the magazine with maybe four BBs. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we gotta locate where the exit for the BB is gonna come out of the top part. So I'm gonna put the top part on the gun, put in the screws so I know exactly where um, the gun is gonna be settled whenever I pull the trigger and shoot. And whenever I shoot, it's gonna leave an indent in wherever it's gonna be coming out from over here. That's gonna show me where I could drill through and make a hole big enough for the BBs to travel through the front part of the plasma rifle. I got the magazine in, but the safety's on. And I got the screws screwed back in here so I know exactly where the BB's gonna hit on the front end of the top piece of the plasma rifle. So, turn the safety off and fire. Okay, so I'm just gonna assume that it's shooting from here because the paint was flying off from this area. All right, so I went through all the trouble to put the gun in to the top piece over here and I found out that it does shoot over here and I made a really big hole. So if we put the gun in, line it where the screw holes are at the bottom rail of the pistol. Look at that. So it has enough space for the BB to just fly and shoot right through there. Let's put the plasma rifle together and see how it works. And that's how you make an airsoft compact plasma rifle. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had a good time creating it. Just to let you guys know though, my next airsoft conversion is going to be the airsoft needler with the help from my friend Ryan and a further upgrade to install the ammo counter and flashlight into the homemade MA5B. I hope you guys are looking forward to these upcoming videos. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget, this is Truly Combat Evolved. I'll see you next time.